students bring something from home that they can then bring home so that there's no cross-contamination. Everybody kind of knows this one, right? You put it on your head and practice walking around. But I like to use it for spotting. Kids get a huge kick out of this. This is how I teach spotting to very young children. We put the beanie baby on our head, put the hands on the hips or on the shoulders, whatever we teach, and we look at ourselves in the mirror and make sure that you can see your baby. Then we start to turn our bodies, but you keep your eyes on your baby. And then we turn back to the middle. And we kind of shuffle our feet and shuffle, shuffle this way and really turn the head. Make sure you're stretching your neck so you can see your baby. And then you come back to the side. And we keep doing that a couple times. And they'll probably start doing it because it's really fun. And we shuffle this way. And then we shuffle this way. And you just get them really comfortable. Some kids think this is going to come very naturally. But some kids are automatically going to do this right away. So you want to make sure that you really help them focus on this movement right here, right as they start to turn to create that opposition with their head to, um, as one of my mentors likes to say, leave the head and move the shoulder instead. Um, if I can, depending on the situation, sometimes I would in the past put my hands on them and keep their head here while I manually turn their shoulder. Obviously right now we're not doing that, but it is something that you can do to help them feel that stretch and that opposition. Once they get really comfortable with this, then we have the fun part. So you shuffle, shuffle, shuffle as far as you can, and then you spot, and the baby will fall off, and they think it's hilarious. But they have to find their eyes again in the mirror, and then you fix yourself, and you can put the baby back on your head, and you do it on the other side. Shuffle, 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 shuffle as far as you can, and spot, find your eyes. They get a great kick out of it, and it helps them really learn this movement. Then you can start to incorporate it into your suit new, and you turn, 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 you spot, find your eyes. Sometimes I even make them point at themselves in the mirror. Time to cross, look, 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 and find the eyes and finish. Okay, so the next thing I like to do with these guys is um, a couple different kinds of jumps. Now I would recommend these for um, like maybe ages eight to 10. Believe it or not, 10 year olds still actually really like to play with baby babies. They just don't want to tell anybody because they think they're cool. So I use these to help teach Assemble and see some for the older dancers. So we put the baby on the floor. Back you up a little bit. Okay. First position right behind your baby. A lot of people like to teach assemble, not necessarily traveling too much, but I find that they tend to land one, two if they don't have somewhere to go. So I like to get the movement and the motion of their feet assembling in the air. Um, before I start really working on the like technical skills of things um, and their awesome place just come smoother when we start to work on those things. So that's why I do it this way and it does look a little clunky but again there is a reason behind why I do it this way. So we just start turning to the side, make sure that we are in our pizza slice and then we lift up and lands together, jumping right over the baby baby, and then make them step back. Or if they're really fancy, you can have them look in the mirror, jump back, landing in first position. Time to staying in your pizza slice, lift up, and landing in first position. The other thing I like to teach this age group, again, ages like eight to sometimes 12, is seesaw. Now, seesaw can be really clunky and wonky because they always want to lift the leg and leap onto it. And what I find is if they have something to jump over, then they're more likely to move. But if you just start right away with the jump, then they end up tripping on their own feet. So in order to get the two feet up, one foot down kind of motion, I have them do three jumps in first. One, two, three, one foot. And that helps them get the feeling of both feet pushing off of the ground the same amount. And then all they have to do is land on the single foot. When I first introduce these, I tend to have them land in a coupe or an attitude, as opposed to trying to hit that perfect position, because I want the concept of the seesaw before we work on the position, because that idea of coming up off of two feet, landing on one, is the most complicated part of the seesaw. So again, for that age is um, eight, sometimes 10 to 12, one, two, three, one foot. 
And it, once I started doing this, it made a huge difference in my kid's ability to jump up off of those feet. Sometimes I will say two feet up, one foot down. And if you use enough spring in your legs, you can time it so that your words are working with your body. Two feet up, one foot down. And they like to say it while they do it. They love to talk while they dance. I don't know why. Last step, Padasha. I actually start teaching the concept of Padasha to my two-year-olds. It doesn't look like a Padasha. There is no technique behind it, but they love it and it's super cute and they love to say it. So we start in parallel and we stand behind our baby or if you have like a silicone dot, that works well for the little kids so they don't trip on it. But we just do knee, one, two, jump back. And they love it. There's something about saying one, two while they do it. It, 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 there's just this like, they get so excited about it. So that's how I teach it to the very, very young children is one, two and jump back. When they get a little bit older, like three, four, we start doing it in our first position. So we do knee to your diamond and jump back. And most of them can do it by the end of the year. Now, when you get to like level one, ages five to six, I still use the bear. And we do start at the beginning of the year going forward, landing in first position. But then about halfway through the year, we start going to the side of the bear. Now, when you start going side to side, you end up with a lot of this and they get really confused. So I like to make sure that they understand that their knee is an arrow. And sometimes I'll draw a triangle or an arrow on the board. So your knee tells you which way to go. If your knee is going this way, you're gonna go this way. If your knee is going this way, you're gonna go this way. I also like to help point. Same arm, same foot, same direction. It just helps them make that connection. So we go knee and we go one, two over the bear and then we switch. Knee, one, two over the bear and then we switch. When they get to the point near the end of the year, they can start using the arms and it just kind of comes naturally to them at that point. Now for little babies, like ages two to four, I also like to have them do balancing exercises. So we put the baby baby on their head and we walk to a heel around the room. Sometimes even the level ones, like the five, six, get a big kick out of this too. The older dancers, like the five, six, seven year olds, I make them go forwards and backwards. So they have to look at themselves in the mirror as they go backwards. Now the rule for the older ones is if you drop it, you're not allowed to pick it back up, which helps alleviate the, I'm throwing my bear around the room and knocking you in the face with it, or you know, them messing up with it or whatever. So you tell them once you lose your bear, you don't get to pick it back up again. They start really paying attention to where their hands are.